Hello there, my fellow Xenos haters, and welcome to a brand new episode about the specialists from the Death Watch, aka the Inquisition's branch dealing with the alien threats to the Imperium. Like you guys suggested in one of my previous Death Watch videos, I will still cover stuff like the Death Watch tactical marines, devastators, assaults, etc., but only if they have unique Death Watch lore attached to them. Either that, or I'll simply cover famous members of theirs in a specific famous Death Watch Heroes set of episodes. All of that being said, I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn more about the Kill Marine, shall we? A Death Watch Kill Marine is a specially trained battle brother of the Death Watch who is skilled in solo operations and acts essentially as an Astartes special operations warrior. A kill marine is often sent to investigate and exterminate where possible, or to call in backup where it is truly needed. Not every Xenos related threat demands the full deployment of a full kill team, but many seemingly inconsequential incidents can be harbingers of a greater threat that it would be unwise to ignore. Under these unique circumstances, a watch captain will deploy these lone kill marines to carry out their sacred duty. Kill marines spend a lot of their time living alongside those they must ultimately defend, sharing their trials and seeing the world through their eyes. Every Xenos threat encountered by the Death Watch does not always warrant the full destructive power of an Astartes kill team. Sometimes a mission may call for a more subtle approach, which can be handled by a lone, specially trained operative. These one-man missions are the bread and butter of the elite Astartes known as the Kill Marines. They are naturally denied the reliable supporting firepower of their battle brothers, and fall back on the stealth and infiltration techniques they first mastered as scout initiates to perform their duty. The scout sergeants often make superlative Death Watch kill marines, with little additional training required, but these specialists are drawn from all the ranks of the Death Watch equally, as the situation demands them. It requires a particular mindset and view of the galaxy to become a successful kill marine. A certain independence of thought and great strength of spirit are in many ways more important than the possession of exceptional stealth skills though those are also vital. A kill marine must possess the right temperament and the mental discipline and fortitude to operate for long periods of time cut off from their own kind, and from the sacred touchstones of the chapter. Yet at the same time, the kill marine must demonstrate a certain openness of mind and aptitude to collaborate with the non-Astartes personnel he will invariably encounter during his missions. Even among the exceptional warriors of the Death Watch, such uniquely qualified space marines are very few and far between. Space marines usually live a cloistered existence in their fortress monasteries. Their contact with the outside world is normally limited by fighting wars in it. Their interactions with mortal humans only come in chance encounters on the battlefield, or with their chapter serfs, who are totally obedient to them anyway. By contrast, a kill marine has to interact frequently with the existing authorities and power structures within the Imperium, often acting as a direct representative of the Death Watch, before planetary governors, war councils, and ruling bodies of other adepta. Kill marines often spend a lot of their time living side by side with those they are charged to protect, helping them in their trials and seeing the world through very different eyes. During their missions, a kill marine will make allies and enemies of many that they meet, and hear tales and stories that would never reach a watch fortress otherwise. He might become involved in events that ultimately have nothing to do with the Death Watch directly, but rebound to the greater security of the Imperium. In this way, the remote Death Watch maintains a slender connection to the great masses it is supposed to protect, even as it stands vigil in the darkest gulf surrounding humanity. 
In practical terms, the greatest step a Kilmarine must take is to secure travel between the stars, as Death Watch vessels can rarely be spared for their direct employment. Interstellar starships are so precious that even the word of a space marine will not always turn one from its course. More militantly mined battle brothers have sometimes opted for the expediency of capturing a pirate vessel and forcing its crew to do their will, exterminating their unwilling hosts once they reach the journey's end. However, many less dramatic opportunities do exist for a kill marine who is prepared to think more broadly. He might travel aboard an Imperial Navy warship, or rogue trader vessel for example, or join the retinue of an Inquisitor for a time, if it will serve his purposes. To do this, the kill marine may have to ask and not demand his passage by offering his assistance in trade for reaching his destination. Imperial authorities will usually welcome the ability to gain access to the knowledge and experience of a space marine for their own purposes in some vexing matter. The singular skills a kill marine can bring to bear are liable to open whole realms of possibility that were previously out of reach to a rogue trader captain or an inquisitor. A previously unknown and potent player entering the great game of imperial politics can be invaluable for their schemes. The guarantees of transportation to an undisclosed location that a kill marine may ask for are a small price to pay to secure his aid. More cynical commentators have noted that the portrayal of the kill marine as some kind of diplomatic emissary is disingenuous at best and an outright lie at worst. A kill marine is still a space marine a superhumanly fast and strong warrior trained in the very highest arts of war. Some accuse kill marines of being spies and assassins, operating at the behest of their watch commander masters, independent and unregulated agents of a shadowy organization with a reputation for exterminating entire worlds when it suits them. The coming of a kill marine may be treated with great alarm by some, an unsubtle reminder that the harbingers of death are near. They often forego power armor and use non-standard weaponry of a somewhat stealthier demeanor than the bolt gun and chainsword. They maintain that this practice is born of practicality, when they are commonly moving through environments designed for an unarmored man and that employing more easily concealed weapons often serve to soften their otherwise intimidating and warlike aspect. It is expected that such peerless warriors would adapt to their circumstances by owning their stealth and unarmed combat skills to exceptional levels, so they can slay quickly and quietly in case of trouble. Such paranoid accusations may have some foundation in reality on occasion. At times, kill marines have turned on those apparently giving them aid, even unto slaying entire households from within on the pretext of uncovering corruption among their ranks. How often these events are rooted in coincidence and spontaneous action, as opposed to the carefully considered orders of the watch commander, is impossible to say. The responses of the Death Watch to those brave enough to level such charges are simply that those who have no association with the alien have nothing to fear. It is true that kill marines are often sent on missions obscure to their battle brothers in the Death Watch and even to themselves. The Librarian and the Apothecarian can layer mental blocks and hypno-conditioning into a space marine's mind to transform it into a receptacle for the most sensitive knowledge. Secret orders or communiques that a watch captain will not entrust to an astropathic communication may be buried deep into a kill marine subconscious, for him to transport to another watch fortress. A kill marine may carry, knowingly or unknowingly, relics or other items of key importance for delivery into the hands of a specific individual. They may be assigned to guard an individual, while at the same time having pre-programmed assassination protocols in place to eliminate them if the call arises. As a result of their time away from the support of other battle brothers, a kill marine learns to be much more resourceful, 
develop his own combat techniques and essentially fight as a one-man kill team. One such notable kill marine is known in the Death Watch archives as Death Watch Brother Semnai. A notable kill marine of the Lamenters chapter, Brother Semnai has served his second vigil of the Long Watch at the time of the Hadex Anomaly operation and his first spent as a kill marine in the Coronas Expanse. The exact nature of Brother Semnai's service in that far distant region of the galaxy remains a mystery, and it appears he traveled on the bridges of as many as a dozen different rogue trader starships. Many suspect Brother Semnai has been charged with hunting down a specific enemy of the Death Watch in the Coronas Expanse and that he finally cornered that unknown enemy on the very brink of the Hecaton Rifts. Other than the fact that Brother Semnai discharged his apocryphon oath during that final battle, all that is known is that he sought to return to the chapter's homeworld, his vessel laying up at Watch Fortress Ariok during its long voyage. Needless to say, Brother Semnai never completed his journey deciding instead to stand a second vigil after Inquisitor Ramaeus approached him and specifically asked for his aid in some undisclosed task. And that, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Death Watch Kill Marines for today. What is your opinion on these solo Space Marine agents? Let us know in the comments below. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for more content. Thank you kindly for watching, and I will see you next time. The Emperor Protects.